Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. Guys, today we're going to check out the lost parents and evidence against Trinity. Guys, let's just get straight into this. I was born a Christian, and as a matter of fact, I compete with all Christians in my love and attachment to Jesus Christ and his message. I believe I know more about Jesus Christ and his life and his mother and his grandfather and his legacy than most Christians. As a matter of fact, most Christians really should call themselves Christologists. Because it's the study. It is what people say about Jesus Christ. Not who Jesus Christ was or how he actually lived. For he himself never told anyone to call themselves Christians. But I was born a Christian, we can say that. That nomenclature was put upon me. And as a Christian, I asked about this issue of Jesus Christ being the, the son of God. I wanted to understand that. I wanted to understand how could Jesus be God's son and also be God and also be a divine person among three persons that's part of the one God. Now see if you can mathematically fig uh, figure that out. The Trinity says God in three persons, whether you're following the, the Nicene Creed or the Athanasian Creed or the Apostles' Creed. They all say God in three persons. Person, person, person. Now how do you get one, two, three, one? How do you get one God out of person, person, person? And they make it clear that each one is a person and a divine personality, yet they all are one God. A mystery that has never been solved in 2,000 years. No Christian, no minister, no cardinal, no priest, not even the Pope or any of the church fathers can tell you today how that is. So they've all decided to use a word to sum it all up. It's a mystery, my son. Well, that's a mystery I think that a hundred Sherlock Holmes will never be able to figure out. I think you need a little bit more than forensic science to figure that mystery out. But Jesus Christ himself, he answered what he meant by son. Because you and I both know that when Jesus Christ was asked, oh rabbi, teach us how to pray. Jesus Christ gave the Christians or his disciples, the Nazarenes, he gave them a prayer that all of you know to be the Lord's Prayer. How many people are Christians here? Don't be shy, let me see. Good. There's enough. Let's walk through, let's walk through, let's talk through the Lord's Prayer. I mean, it's a good prayer. He said, I will teach you how to pray. He said, our Father who art in heaven. He didn't say my Father. He didn't say my father. If he was the exclusive son of Almighty God, then he would have said, my father who art in heaven. What did he say, Christians? Our father. Our father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Not my name. Not our name. But thy name. He's speaking in the second person. The second person exclusive. Thy kingdom come. Whose kingdom come? My kingdom come? If Jesus is God and he's part of the Godhead, he's one of the three, then he owns part of that too. He should say, our kingdom come. Thy will be done. I'm not being facetious here. 
I'm quoting a prayer, a prayer that I also feel passionately about. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Who's eating bread? Us. That means Jesus Christ and his mother is both eating bread, isn't it? And if you, if you eat bread, you're going to drink some water or some juice or something. And if you're drinking, eating bread and drinking juice, the body only uses part of it. The rest of it, the body, casts out. Now, can you imagine Almighty God eating bread and drinking juice, defecating and urinating? Now, use your mind, Christians. We're not talking mathematics here. We're not talking high science here. We're not embarrassing anybody here. We're not casting aspersions on anybody here. We're not criticizing or condemning anybody here. We're making sense. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Who's trespassing? Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into, lead us not into temptation. God being tempted. But deliver us from evil. God asking himself to be delivered. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Is that the Lord's prayer? Is that the Lord's prayer? Yes. Jesus made the Lord's prayer and he taught the disciples the Lord's prayer. So that Lord's prayer is for him and everyone else. That Lord's prayer that I just read sounds something like what I read from the Quran initially. It almost sounds something like the Fatiha that we recite 27 times a day. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, all praises to Almighty God, Lord of the worlds. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the compassionate and the merciful. Maliki Yawm din Master of the Day of Judgment. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'een. To you do we worship, thine aid do we seek. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Guide us on the straight path. Siratul ladheena and amta alayhim. Those, the path of those who receive your ni'mah, your favors. Ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim wa laddaleen. And not those who receive your wrath or those who go astray. That's what we say in the Quran, similar to what Jesus said according to the scripture. No contradiction there at all. Guys, he, he said, the disciples asked Jesus, teach us how to pray. And Jesus said, okay, our father, Jesus was teaching them how to pray. But I won't say Jesus wasn't praying as well because Jesus was praying. I believe Jesus is the son of God and I don't believe Jesus is God. Because Jesus clearly said, my father is greater than I, than I am. But Jesus being the son of God, I believe Jesus had been there from day one. Because Jesus clearly said, before Abraham, I am. So Jesus was there since the one. And in the book of Revelation, Jesus said, I am the Almighty. And being the Almighty means He is God. And Jesus said, I am the first and the last. Like Jesus said, I called me the same respect you accord to God. Like when you read these verses, like you understand that Jesus actually cling to I won't say he claims to be God, but I will say as him being the son of God, I will say you being a king and a prince, I feel you are called the prince the same respect you are called to the king. Because if you disobey the king, you find, you still get the wrath of the king. So 
I will use that as an example as Jesus being the prince and God being the king. And God, Jesus actually said, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus made emphasis on these TV beings and people calling them Trinity, but I feel Jesus trying to make us know that there is something special about these three people. You need God, you need the Son, the Mediator, and you need the Holy Spirit to dwell in your life. So when you are baptized, when you are baptized in this, when you are baptized with these three names, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit, like, it is what Jesus said you should do, and we do it. I feel if you read and understand the Bible very well, you know where some Christians are coming from. And the Trinity, like, to me personally, I feel the Trinity is hard to explain. Me personally. Like, I won't say hard to explain because I don't feel... I The Trinity wasn't written in the Bible. And that being said, I don't think you can explain it since it wasn't written in the Bible. But so the better I come up with the concept of the Trinity, I still say there's some sense to it. Because if you think about it, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And like I won't say he meant they are TV gods or I feel some people kind of misunderstood what the person was trying to say, to be honest. I feel people misunderstood him. But guys, I'll make more research about the Trinity and I will get back to you. Guys, you should like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.